I have, a, I have a question. This is between the hospitals and the blood banks more, but there was cases where we did a type in screen and there's a patient that has specific antibodies and we need to do further testing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this delays the process of getting blood for hours. I remember it's like night shift, four in the morning, mm -hmm. and it's like 7.30 a.m. I'm calling blood bank and they still haven't figured out the situation of what blood can we give this patient. So is there any improvement that Turmo is doing by decreasing the screening or is there any technology or software upgrades that we can do in healthcare where that time of screening specific rare blood is uh, more efficient? Yeah. I have an answer to that, Carly. <laughs> so I guess what you're really talking about is alloimmunization, right? The patients that have produced antigens that um, can affect, you know, what can be actually tr transfused back to them. And so I guess as far as I know, there is no mechanism of action behind this. And so we actually treat a lot of sickle cell disease patients with one of our therapies called red blood cell exchange. And it requires a large amount of um, red cells to be exchanged at one time on these patients. And, you know, interestingly with that, there's two types of way these patients can be treated um, via transfusion therapy. There's really three, but I'll talk about two for this instance. It's either simple transfusion, so having one or two units infused every month, or a red cell exchange, which is anywhere from about three to six units of blood a month um, exchanged on our machine. And, you know, it's interesting that the alloimmunization rates or the rate they develop these antibodies doesn't actually increase from the simple transfusion patients where they're receiving less blood to where they're getting infused. Um, it's already exchanged with our therapy. And so what's really interesting about that is uh, they're not really sure how these allo antibodies develop. And so I think there's some very clever people working on that at the moment. Um, but I think to manage that, the only strategy we've got at the moment is knowing what antibodies that these patients have got, knowing what they'll react to, and then to your point, phenotyping and matching all the different blood products that come through, which is incredibly expensive, incredibly time-consuming, and really limits the amount of blood that patients can receive. So, you know, we've got some of these sickle cell patients uh, there, there was a there was a case in Australia where this one sickle cell patient was reliant on two donors because they were just so heavily um, allo immunized that they couldn't have blood from anyone else and that they needed to be basically kept healthy and kept alive by two donors and it was an incredible and they actually met these two donors at one point so yeah. So, so your your question was about testing and can we reduce that time of testing? Trumo doesn't manufacture the reagents or the test kits to test for all those antibodies that these particular patients develop. What we can help with is once they have, for example, sickle cell disease, then we can help reduce their sickle cell load by exchanging their red cells. Yeah. What's the and what's the rationale for decreasing that load? Are we gi giving so much blood where their bone marrow is not producing the antibodies anymore? What's the rationale behind giving them three to six units of blood every single month to decrease that alloimmunization? So when you look at sickle cell disease, it's patients that have a hereditary condition where they've got abnormal red cells. So they're called hemoglobin S cells. Uh, and so these hemoglobin S cells um, cause red blood cells to change shape and become sticky and making it difficult to pass through the small blood vessels in these patients' bodies. The other thing about these hemoglobin S red cells is the fact that normal red blood cells will live up to 120 days. These sickle cells only live 15 to 20 days. So the... The reason why we do transfusion therapy for these patients is to give them more healthy red donor cells, which will increase oxygenation and decrease that anemia, which will decrease some of the symptoms these patients 
have from their disease. So there's two ways that the um, transfusion therapy can happen. Sorry, there's three ways. The first way is something called simple transfusion, where the patient will just come in usually once or twice a month and just have an infusion of red cells. That's great because it's going to increase the oxygen carrying capacity and increase their um, healthy donor cells to keep them healthier. But what can actually happen with that is the fact that if you keep infusing red cells, we're going to run into iron overload. So then the patient might have to have chelation therapy, which you know can sometimes cause GI upsets and, and things like that. With our therapy, red blood cell exchange, what actually happens is that the fact that these patients will come in usually once a month, so we spread out the amount of time um, that they have between treatments, they'll come in and we actually exchange the blood. And that's the big difference. So as we're pumping blood into our therapeutic Optia machine, the red cells go up to the waste bag and we're just exchanging healthy donor cells back. What that actually does is it reduces that um, iron overload because we're exchanging red cells for red cells. So we remain iron neutral, which is a huge benefit because then these patients most likely don't need chelation therapy. And so even though we infuse, or oh, sorry, even though we exchange more blood per month, overall, because we stretch the, the, the frequency of treatments out between simple transfusion and red cell exchange, the patient can actually have less blood infused over the whole year based on the fact that the treatments are less frequent. So I think a big misconception about red cell exchange is, the, is that, are oh, you going to have to use much more blood? Although it's usually more blood per exchange, if you look at that over a year, it's generally not as much blood, just depending on the individual patient and how they're being treated. But the main the main, the main goal of transfusion therapy is to increase the oxygenation of blood and to increase the amount of healthy donor cells, healthy red cells in the patients.